Welcome to Podcasting Smarter, the podcast for podcasters by podcasters. Podcasting Smarter is the official podcast from Podbean, featuring podcasting interviews, best practices, and helpful tips. We're here to give you the tools, resources, product updates, and news to help you get started podcasting and keep your podcast growing. Welcome back, everyone, to Podcasting Smarter. Today's episode is from our January live event, 2024 Podcast Production Essentials. Unveil Pro Secrets with Dan Hewley of Focusrite, where we talked about podcast production, best practices, tips, and how to set yourself up for success, whether you're a beginner or a pro. I want to talk about challenges in podcasting. What are some common challenges that podcasters face in terms of audio quality? I'd love to talk about that and then some best practices or solutions for those issues. There's a few. It's just your your room and having a noisy room. There's the trap of falling into uh, podcast influencers and treating them as audio influencers, which are different things. And yeah, really, really just sounding your best is a tough thing for some people. Mic technique is a tough one. Um, and I, I don't know, uh, before we started recording, I was making sure my mic was in the right place. I'm sitting a different way in my room. So I'm, I'm feeling a little fish out of water right now. What uh, is proper mic placement? What would you recommend for the average person who's recording their podcast at home? Right. You don't want to make sure it's face on. You want to make sure your P's don't pop. Right. That's right. why you have a. Right. Yep. Yeah. The plosives. What I normally do is try to stay about a fist distance away because that's a unit of measure we most of us have is put a fist between you and your mic like that. And I probably muffled the sound, but that's <laughs> about where you want to stay. So get to know what that looks like and try to stay about there. And yes, like you said, you don't want to be head on for the capsule. I can see I have a bit of an angle on this one. And for those plosives, for those P's and those B's that really send that pop sound to the, to the capsule of the microphone, a couple ways to get rid of that. Like a windscreen works. Uh, you and I both have a windscreen uh, pop filter, which is just a, a piece of fabric. And all it's trying to do is break up that powerful sound, that that air that's coming out of your, your mouth at that point. Another thing uh, is to tape a pen or a pencil directly on the center of the capsule because that will divert the air around that and it, it'll break it up and it won't hit the capsule as hard. And so there's all kinds of budget ways to to get rid of it. Oh, I love that. I love that tip as well. Just And you, you mean just right on the top of the microphone? Yep. So, yep, I have a pen right here. So just kind of just like that across the wow. microphone, across the capsule. And what it'll do is it'll it'll make the, the air that comes out with the P's and the B's and it'll divert it to the sides so it won't be as intense. Oh, I love that. I think that that's a really helpful tip for everybody out there. You know, you don't have to go out and, you know, buy an expensive equipment, right? Um, there's always things you can do that'll help you improve your sound that are maybe technique versus gear. So yeah. that's always what we're looking for here at Podbean as well. And in terms of what you said, podcast influencers, not being audio influencers. That's a big one, right? And yeah, most podcasters will have a friend who podcasts, right? Or know other podcasters. And, you know, a lot of these kind of practices and the way people do things are kind of passed from one person to the next, mm -hmm. maybe without a lot of thought. It's just like, oh, this is how I set my mic up, or yep. this is how much I turn up my game. You should just do it the same. Or your mm -hmm. friends will say, oh, this is how I did it. Right. And don't be afraid to ask. That's number one. Yeah. Yeah, don't. Um, I mean, zero disrespect to anybody. N no disrespect to these high level podcasters. But no, not at all. Some of some of them are they they put out blogs about how about their setup, and it's a common question. What what are you using? Um, when I talk to podcast influencers, that's a question a lot of them get. And they're great at telling stories. They're great at building an audience. They're not necessarily great at audio engineering. And I still, I mean that with the most respect to all these people, uh, but don't be afraid to question them and get another opinion on something uh, just to make sure that you're not doing too much. Don't do too much. Don't buy too many things just because a podcaster said so. Keep it basic. And you know, if they, re if they recommend a piece of gear, go to that gear manufacturer and find out the best practices of how to use it. That'll be on their website. We all have tutorials on how to use our interfaces for podcasting. All of us brands do. Um, so find the best way to use that piece of gear and don't necessarily trust that audio influencer because they're a great storyteller. Yeah. They might not be a great audio engineer. Yeah, I think that's that's such a great point. I mean, you said a couple of things there that I really want to expand on. Number one, is that a lot of people that have big followings, they may know what gear they're using, but they may also be working with people that are setting it up. Right. Exactly. So yeah. They may, you know, they may even have 
gear sponsored, but they don't know what settings everything's on. So that's number one. And number two, it is always super important and easy to overlook getting to know your gear, getting to know the ins and outs of your gear and how it works. And most of the time, I believe this is true. You don't need more equipment. You just really need to know how to maximize the usage of what you have right? Yes. After those three or four pieces of initial equipment, right? You have your microphone and we're just talking about recording. We're going to, we're going to expand on that in a little bit. You know, you have your microphone, you have your audio interface, you have the program to record, you have your computer after that. Everything else is, is their accessories, sure. And technique, but it's knowing what your gear is capable of and educating yourself, which is a lot, right? It can be really intimidating. So don't be afraid. Like you said, reach out to the manufacturer, reach out to their websites, reach out to other audio engineers that have blogs, right? I mean, at Focus, mm-hmm. right? You also do a lot of interaction with podcasters about what works. Um, and of course, you can always email us at podcasting smarter at podbean.com. And if you have a question for Dan, we'll forward it to him. Don't worry. Yeah, please <laughs> send your questions. I, I love talking to podcasters and helping podcasters. One thing that you just said, because one person sets their level to a certain place, they say set it to 50 percent or something like that. That works for their voice. Your yes. voice is different from your voice. So you can't yeah. even go for like the input or the gain settings. That's not something you can copy from someone else. You have to every voice is different. You and I have different intensities to our voices. So you have to set it for you, not for what some other person told you is good for them. Yeah, absolutely. I think that that's a really great point as well. And it's easy to kind of think that podcasting is formulaic because we see a lot of people's success and sometimes audio quality can sound the same and you think, oh, it's all the same, but it's so nuanced. And so it's important to just figure out what works for you and to do that. So next I want to talk about you know, the insights of Vocaster too, because at sure. Focus Right, the company you're with, you guys made an audio interface specifically for podcasting. Most we audio did. interfaces are for music. Let's be yeah. honest. Mm-hmm. They are because I mean, music, but Vocaster 2 is specifically for podcasting. So can you tell us a little bit about what makes it stand out for podcasting purposes and really how podcasters can use audio interfaces specifically for the podcasting medium? The Vocaster 2 was something that I fought for our company to make. Um, And I'm very proud of the work that our team did on it. It's a great sounding product. I love and believe in this product. What we did is I I, I went to a lot of events and talked to podcasters um, as a representative of Focus, right? To try to find out what the pain points were and what the problems were and what the gear was, they were, was being used. You hear things like, you know, my, I have an SM7B uh, or an RE20, which are, which are notoriously gain hungry microphones. That means you have to turn the gain way up. So Vocaster has enough gain for any microphone. You don't need to have a gain booster of any kind. We've eliminated the need for that. And uh, another thing is headphone outputs. I suggest everybody on the show have a pair of headphones. So you can hear yourself and you can hear your guests and you're not shouting because you're, you're, your own sound is muffled. Independent controls for both of those. So you can both have different headphone uh, levels so you can hear it to your comfort level. And then uh, something cool, just because you're a storyteller, you're not an audio engineer to that point. Auto gain is a really cool feature. So you push the auto gain button, you talk into the microphone for about 10 seconds, you just watch the timer kind of time out and it sets that ideal level for you. So you don't have to think about it. You just start your show with confidence, which is very beneficial. There is an enhance button, which is very helpful. Um, it's kind of like the magic wand button for your photos. You push that button and there's four different presets that you can use and just find the one that sounds best for your voice. For the more advanced people, you can adjust uh, the compression, uh, the EQ and the filter that are behind the scenes. But if you don't want to, you don't have to. And then finally on the front, there's a mute button for each channel. I think that's something that's really important, right? There's there's a lot of things that you don't realize you need when you're recording, but little things that help improve your experience. So for everybody out there, you know, you can always mute yourself. I think that that's a really, really great thing. And especially if you're interviewing a guest and we're going to talk about, you know, kind of audio quality tips and getting the most out of your recording next. But if you're in an interview, for instance, right. And let's say, you know, I'm talking to Dan, but I'm about to sneeze. I can mute myself. Right. And so that's something that really you know, yeah, of course you can always edit it out. And that's, what's great about recording individually. You can always just mute yourself or remove that in post-production as well. But it's something where, you know, having that auto gain is Mm -hmm. really helpful. If you're worried about the gain quality of your podcast and what your microphone is absorbing, um, if you want to have that smooth sound. So next I want to talk about audio quality tips. So 
what are some things that podcasters can do to improve their audio quality regardless of budget? We spoke a little bit about mic techniques and mic placement, making sure also that, you know, this is something that we haven't exactly talked about, but you want to make sure your microphone is at an angle. Yeah, slightly at an angle. That that helps too for the plosives as well. But yeah, just having good mic technique is one of the most important things. And then also as an audio engineer, when I first started, you you buy all these plugins or uh, tools that can change and modify the sound of your of your voice or your music or whatever you're you're recording. Just because you have all those tools doesn't mean you have to use any of those tools. Just because someone says you have to use a compressor on your voice, that's not 100% accurate. I generally don't do much processing at all on my podcast because I'm a firm believer of a clean signal going in or a clean sound being recorded into your computer should be all you need. I fix it in pre was a podcast that I was going to start with a friend of mine. Uh, Fix it in post is something that people say all the time, but fix it in pre and then you don't have to worry about it later. So just make sure you're getting that the best sound you can. Um, And if you're not happy with it, try again. Um, You know, if you're upgrading from that USB mic to an audio interface, don't try your audio interface on an episode of your podcast. Do it for hours beforehand. Uh, You had mentioned get to know your gear. And that's something before you use it the first time, get to know your gear really well. So you're comfortable. Just don't don't do too much. And if you don't sound good, find find an audio mentor, find someone who knows what they're talking about in podcasting and go with them. They don't they might not necessarily be the most popular podcaster, but if they sound good, that's really what you're trying to achieve is finding that that good sound. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think what you've said in terms of that audio quality and playing with your gear, right? Experiment, get weird. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, as podcasters, there's already a level of weird, right? You're already here to be vulnerable and tell stories and put yourself out there in the world. So make sure that you experiment with your gear and that you know how all the settings work and you know what all the possibilities are so that when Mm -hmm. the time comes, you can just change the setting or know what's going to sound good when and where, I think is a really important aspect as well. And in terms of that audio quality, we kind of briefly touched on this earlier, but I want to talk about space. Mm -hmm. Sure. (laughs) In terms of getting out there, right? So mics, especially dynamic mics, they're not going to pick up the sound of a pin dropping. They're going to pick up your voice, but your voice and the way that your voice sounds on the mic is going to sound different in different physical environments. Yeah. So I'm in a, I'm in a room that's it, hilariously, I have carpet up to my shoulder here. That's how the house came when I bought it. And it was funny. My realtor said, yeah, we could, we could get rid of that, but no, it's perfect. There's sound absorption right there. So it, that works for me when I'm mixing. So I, I mix with speakers So what happens is if you have flat surfaces behind you, the speakers will bounce off of that and come back and you'll hear it. You'll hear the sound again. So there's a bit of uh, reverb or, you know, which is we've all heard reverb before. Yeah, like an echo. Yeah, yeah, an echo. It sounds like you're in a big church or a big uh, auditorium or something. So that happens. And, you know, think about that. Like you're constantly listening to music. That sound is just bouncing around your room. So minimal sound treatment is, is really great Uh, for for recording. Make sure you're not sitting next to another person with a microphone, Uh, sit across from them. It makes for a good conversation because you can make eye contact with the person, but also your microphones aren't going to be picking up the same sounds, which helps a little later in the editing process. And there, yeah, there's, there's companies out there where they will help tune your room for you. So it's kind of cool technology. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of plug in the measurements of your room uh, online and you can set a microphone kind of in the center of your room and let the microphone listen to your room and it'll tell you where you need things. It's kind of a cool process. Again, like when I was in music school uh, 12 years ago, this was all math and I had to figure it out myself. Now these kids got it so easy. We're living in the future. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. And And we'll have some links. We'll have some links here that kind of show you where you can do that. So crazy. And, you know, I've had top podcasters tell me, you know, I record under a blanket in my closet, right? Mm -hmm, To get that mm -hmm. very intimate, (laughs) soft sound, right? Of not having reverb or the sound of the room. They want, they really want things to sound muffled. So you really only hear their voice and it's intimate and, you know, you feel like you're there with them. And I think that that's a really important aspect of podcasting as well, because we talk about this all the time at Podbean. You're listening to a podcast on the same device. You talk, you call your mom right? You talk mm-hmm. to your family, you talk to your kids. And so in terms of the sound, it's important to understand people are very rarely listening to your podcast through speakers. Yeah. People listen in the car, but people mostly listen on headphones, right? I think yeah. that's a really important aspect as well. So when you're thinking about the sound of your show and the sound of your room and the space around you, how do you want it to sound? And some of those tips, like we said, is making sure you have things in your room, but also I've had podcasters 
say specifically closets. Closets are a really big one. Putting blankets over your head are a really big one to just get a muffled sound. We've had like all sorts. I've had people tell me all sorts of stuff, you know, in terms of where they record under tables, you know, I like it, it's really crazy. So it's great to experiment and find out what works for your show. And you can also build it in, right? You can say, hi, everybody, I'm talking to you from under my blanket and, you know, welcome. Yeah. Or you could not, you know, because it doesn't fit into your show. But it's important to play around with your sound in that way as well. Thanks for joining us for this replay of our live event episode. If you have any questions about podcasting and want to get in touch with the Podbean team, reach out to us at podcastingsmarter at podbean.com. Happy podcasting.